Ignition sequence starts. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor and we have ourselves an over six, $65,000 Bitcoin, over 65 cent XRP. In the last 24 hours, XRP has gotten up into a 66 or so rent uh, cent range. And there's a lot of these chart guys that are talking about things coming, Dark Defender. Um, XRP strolling strictly around the FIB level at 64 cents. The lines are clear and accurate. Then he goes on, we expected 91 cent to $1 in March as indicated on 28th of February. I'll update you with the weekly and monthly time frames. So he's calling for 91 cent to a dollar in March. But then look at this one. This is a person who, I love covering these because it's not people that are like XRP into XRP or whatever. Anytime I can find somebody that does charts or this kind of stuff that's a Bitcoin maxi or just somebody that's not really into XRP that's when these get exciting XRP holders better strap the hell in because I have a feeling about this one remember I was the only person who called the SEC case pump a week before it happened based off money flow indications I was tracking I'm seeing very similar action now let's see what happens man that looks good I think all right, check this guy out. This guy said Bitcoin's basically just going to replace gold. I think, you know, having tracked Bitcoin for a while, one of I learned is that making price, price predictions is super, super hard. And I, I guarantee I'm going to be wrong if I make a price prediction. But what I can tell you is Bitcoin is in the process, I think, of demonetizing a lot of the big assets out there. I think everybody talks about gold as one of them. But it's not only gold, it's gold, real estate, stocks, right? And these are assets that are in, in other orders of magnitude of Bitcoin, right? If you just look at, uh, you know, the gold, for example, we're talking about the $10 trillion in market cap. And, you know, Bitcoin is coming for gold. There's no question about that. I think, you know, if you look at the performance of gold compared to Bitcoin, that says everything that you, you need to see. Uh, but it's not only going to be Bitcoin. As I said, I think the, the process of demonetization is going to happen. It's going to happen in most of these large asset classes. I think investors have for many decades been looking at ways to monetize, save their assets, you know, and, and make sure that uh, they, they're, they're free from debasement. Okay. So basically, I mean, look, <laughs> I think crypto is going to go up. Bitcoin is going to go up. But the idea that it's somehow going to replace gold while all the central banks are buying the gold, folks, come on. That now, now look, it could it could even get market cap prices that are and, and rival gold in that respect. But here's the problem: gold is not going anywhere. That's why I do have a sponsor, Miles Franklin, in the description of this video, and I do own gold and I buy gold myself. But I also have the crypto covered, so. Um, now, I want to show you this, as long as we're talking about Bitcoin and gold, I want to show you this bizarro clip right here that from the kid, Jack Maulers. That this, the fact that they have these kids like this as spokesmen that are obviously people they picked for marketing purposes, I, I, this, kid, it, this is part of what has always made me nervous about Bitcoin, is that this kind of stupid stuff. Gold is stuck in your butt. I, can you imagine listening to people from Ripple on stage even saying anything about your butt? <laughs> so stupid. Let's go. Come on. What's going on here? Let me see if I can. Okay, sorry. Accidentally stopped recording there. I'm starting back and I'm getting my, uh, making sure my volume's right. For some reason, I can't get this guy to play. I'm going to see, I'm going to do something and see if that changes it. Watch this. See if he wants to play now. Gold is stuck in your butt. In your brain. Okay. Right? 
how would I put gold, how would I get gold through the airport? I can't put it in my brain, right? My ear, my ear hole isn't wide enough, right? It's, it's got to go up my butt, I guess. That's just so weird. All right. So then we've got Kavita Gupta. Now, this is funny because here's CNBC squawk boxes, and they never have covered the truth about Eastgate. They've, they've ignored the topic completely. And now they're having the woman on who sued Joseph Lubin to, to interview, and they don't even, I, I mean, I haven't even watched the clip yet, but I'm pretty sure they don't even ask her about Lubin and consensus. They're just wanting her to analyze Bitcoin. I don't follow the other ones that I always just in, in it's sort of a simpleton with all this. There was Bitcoin and there was everything else. The S <laughs> you know, there's the, the nickname is SH coin mm -hmm. uh, for a lot of these other things. But some of them are real and they have some some blockchain uh, characteristics that uh, that will be, you think, utilitarian in the future. Yeah, a lot of technology underneath, basically. So Bitcoin has always been, as we have also talked in the past, about the currency, the storage value. And it has always, now Bitcoin also coming up with a lot of technology beyond just settlement. But Ethereum is looking really, really great with all the decentralization, ETH ETF, which is a lot of expectations are about to happen. Then when we talk about Solana, them changing their technology. Also, the big drop in Solana prices up down to around $16 approximately was also because of the SEC naming Solana, Polygon, bunch of tokens as maybe security without I, any proof. But we are seeing the technologies coming back and the technology making those tokens really picking God. up the price. So we're going to have to bone up on this stuff back here. <laughs> like, no, let me, let me tell you what really happened is somebody in their network of people who pump up all these tokens <coughs> called the SEC and said Solana's our next pump. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, but the, trust me, the Solana thing is just like Bitcoin and Ethereum were a marketing program with many people involved. They're, now they're doing the exact same thing with Solana. It's the same group of people. They just all happen to start showing support for Solana and they're all, all of a sudden interested in Solana. <laughs> and there's a reason for that. I think I think Ethereum got so tainted that they all said, "Man, we might have to jump ship and talk and really talk up another one." Because uh, it looks like it's and it, don't forget because this is key. FTX was big into Solana, and folks, we know FTX. All this it's the same group of people, the same people that were involved in in. FTX, then the money goes to Ukraine, comes back in, goes into the Democrat Party. It's all the same group of people that were on stage at FTX. The same group of people that you see at these these major conferences. It's the same group of people who who it's almost like they have a pact never to mention Ripple or XRP, but talk about Bitcoin, Ethereum, and now they've added Solana. Same group of people. Here to stay, and I know. People are waiting for uh, Ethereum and Ether for, for the ETF. They think that's just a matter of time at this, at this point. Think about this. Look, as long as we're on this topic, think about this. Bitcoin, high fees, slow, confirmations, takes forever. Ethereum, the gas fees are a joke. Still, the gas fees are a joke. Solana, the network's gone down, what, four times in the last couple of years? But the one that you ignore that... Has 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 no none of those problems that works. The one that you ignore and never speak about is XRP. That's a re there's a reason for that, folks. That's why I'm here. I mean, I've never been able to understand, other than the fact that these people are trying to use regulatory capture and everything they can think of to stop the one that actually works because theirs are all pile of garbage. Like it's a matter of time, but it also depends upon how SEC takes it. Like in the past, even for Bitcoin ETF, they took all their great time. And like even when the commissioner announced, the SEC commissioner announced that the Bitcoin ETF is here, it was pretty much forced by the court because there was no reasoning not to do it. 
uh, I think with Ethereum, it's either going to be super easy or it's going to be a little bit more difficult because the commissioners have always been, have very, very contrarian views about whether it's a security or it's a utility. One commissioner saying it's a utility, like Commissioner Hillman in the past, but currently they have not taken a really great oh. stand about it. Said that the expectations in the prices and the numbers have already baked in. If you look at the jump from uh, in last two months, you can see that ETH ETF expectations and a lot of technology products which has been launched, the adoption of DeFi, which decentralized finance has already like eight billion dollars on new protocols, like multi-billion dollar game. We are not even talking about millions actually logged there has already uh, i think eth is right now is very underappreciated you see ethereum the same as bitcoin i see the utilization of those two very different ethereum i see like an infrastructure layer like anything which long time back a lot of microsoft or uh, like uh, you know oracle was a bitcoin i see more of as a currency though the technologies are getting there but it's going to take time to come with respect to technology to eat i feel like the technology tokens we have not seen the real rallies there and i think end of this year we're going to see the real rally in those technology tokens whether it's ethereum whether it's polygon whether it's optimism anything which actually going to push the institutional adoption of anyone who's holding this etfs whether it's Bitcoin, they need custody, they need the way of settlement, they need a way of transacting these things, even as a most basic utilization. Whatever you do, don't mention XRP. Check this out. Uh, this weekend, we were talking about this Ashley Prosper's Freedom of Information Act request. She was at the point where she was going to sue the SEC because they would not release to her her Freedom of Information Act. They found like 217 instances where JP Morgan and S the SEC had some type of communications about Ripple and or XRP and they wouldn't give them to her. So we were making um, imp the em Empower organization aware this weekend and this is the president of the Empower organization and he says this because I asked the question: Why on earth would J.P. Morgan be communicating with the S with the SEC about Ripple and/or XRP? And he says, "Excellent question. We'd like to get to the bottom of." Uh oh, these guys don't stop once they start, folks. Okay, I like this tweet. Bitcoin supply shock. This is good. Good morning, crypto. Right now, over 10,000 Bitcoin are purchased daily, with only 900 new coins being produced. That's an 11 times demand versus supply ratio. Come late April, daily production is re reduced to 450 Bitcoin, creating an astonishing 22 times demand versus supply ratio. Brace yourselves for the supply shock of a lifetime. Interesting. Um, then this came out yesterday that Gary Gensler and the SEC got a win. Um, in in with Judge Tana Lynn ruled the case fell under uh, under ju SEC jurisdiction. She called um, some of the second crypto assets on the secondary market securities. Then Ashley Prosper is commenting on it. it. Says on March 1st, SEC obtained a default judgment against the defendants in SEC versus Wahi. This case named several digital assets and securities. All but one operated on the Ethereum network. The cryptos named in the case are these. This only increases my suspicions that the SEC is going to officially label Ethereum as a security at some point in, in the not too distant future. Fred Rispoli also weighed in. He's an, they're, I think they're both attorneys. It's not great, but this was an order entered as a default judgment against a defendant that, fi that fled the country before the SEC could get him. Judge just copied SEC's motion for her, her order as there was no opposition, not very strong law, and probably won't even be reported a, a, be a reported decision. All right, and then Perry Ann Boring is is warning everybody about Congress targeting digital assets. Yeah. What What is the Stop Crypto Ban campaign? Well, that's our campaign to stop this bill. Okay. For all these reasons that yeah. that we've been discussing, but you should you should care whether you know you you're into Bitcoin or you're not. Because once a government 
bans an entire industry, where does it stop? Mm-hmm. What kind of precedent does that set? Right. What's next? So, and if you, th- you know, again, come back to this, you know, example of, of China, mm-hmm. um, you know, what if, you know, the person in power who controls this money system, you know, what if they, what, what if they're not aligned with the LGBTQ community? Mm-hmm. What if you buy or attend, you know, a, you know buy a pamphlet or attend an LGBTQ event? Mm-hmm. The government sees that, they're not aligned with that. Mm-hmm. Can they put right. you out of the system, make it impossible for you to pay your rent or survive? Or what if the, the you know, the government in charge is not aligned with, you know, with something else that you're in? Yeah. So it's, this isn't a fight about Bitcoin. The bill is right. a, is a, is a crypto digital asset bill, but it, it's much bigger than that. It's a fight for human freedom, right? Like it doesn't matter what group affiliation you claim or religious affiliation or rate like if you cede that power to one centralized entity then it's game over for human freedom okay so that that was perry and boring from the chamber of digital commerce and remember she's going to be at xrp las vegas okay and and um the this is the stage where the they've already sold out of the vip tickets this is the stage where they're going to about they're starting to sell all the all the general admission. This thing, my prediction is that this thing will be sold out. Um, I think it'll be sold out by. I wouldn't be surprised if it's sold out by mid April, maybe end of March even. So anyway, that's my prediction. We, I don't we I don't make price predictions, but but I do make XRP Las Vegas predictions. How about that? I think it, I think it's okay to do that. I don't know, but maybe the crypto police will show me otherwise. Um, now, John Deaton, um, who is the solution to Gary and Senator Elizabeth Warren cracking down on crypto? You can go to John Deaton for Senate and donate to him. I've already donated, and I'm going to donate more. But here's a, this was a, I think it's a Boston news station that interviewed John. Listen to this. John Deaton is taking on Massachusetts Senator Elizabeth Warren. The Republican is new to politics and is making a return to Massachusetts to run for the seat. Deaton has been living in Rhode Island, but recently moved back to Massachusetts to run for the seat. He attended law school in Boston and lived in Massachusetts for years. Um, I have a deep connection to this state. Um, Lived in Roxbury, lived in East Boston, Malden, worked at Legal Seafood throughout law school at Copley Mall. He announced his candidacy recently and has built his platform around his life experience. He grew up in poverty in Detroit, went to college, and eventually law school where he joined the Marines. Deaton describes himself as fiscally conservative, socially moderate, and as someone who has identified with aspects of the Democratic Party, independence, and most recently, the Republican Party. We have to have someone who's loyal to the Massachusetts voters and to the country, not loyal to a party or a political agenda or a person. And that's something that I bring. I've never been a partisan person in my life, and I won't be as a senator. Deaton has been a practicing attorney in New England for years, working on asbestos and mesothelioma cases. He says his goal is to help poor people and ensure kids in Massachusetts can climb out of poverty if they work hard. Something he said he was afforded but doesn't believe is possible today. Deaton says this is what separates him from his opponent, incumbent Elizabeth Warren. She likes to fight against the wealthy and the rich, and they should pay more, and they should pay their fair share. But instead of fighting against them, I fight for the poor and for the middle class. And that's a fundamental different approach. And that's what makes me different than Senator Warren. We reached out to Senator Elizabeth Warren for her response, and a spokesperson told us, quote, Senator Warren is taking nothing for granted. She has a strong record of delivering for working families and continues to fight hard for the people of Massachusetts. Deaton is still in the infancy of his campaign, but he says he is committed to his desire to help fix income inequality, and he hopes he has the opportunity to do so. I'm Amanda Keynes. Pretty good stuff. John's out there working hard. Um, now, we're going to go into DAIXRP.com, and here's what's going down. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you know who I'm, uh, I've got. I don't do them often, but today I'm going to interview someone 
And what I'll do is I'm going to post the full interview in DAIXRP.com. And then what I'll do is I'll, um, I'll, I'll I'm going to put clips of it out on uh, X. But I'll, I'll let you know who that is when we go into DAIXRP here shortly. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, and tell your friends and family. Here we go.